Hello, this podcast is being delivered by Dr. Sushma Singh today in Chapter 9, Trends and Developments in Indian Politics. In the last chapter, we take a synoptic view of the last two decades of the politics in India. These developments are complex for various kinds of factors came together to produce unanticipated outcomes in this period. The new era in politics was impossible to foresee. It is still very difficult to understand. These developments are also controversial for these involve deep conflicts and we are still too close to the events. Yet, we can ask some questions central to the political change in this period. Like, what are the implications of the rise of coalition politics for our democracy? What is mandalization all about? In which ways will it change the nature of political representation? What is the legacy of Ram Janm, Bhumi movement and Ayodhya demolition for the name of political mobilization? And what does the rise of a new policy consensus do to the nature of the political choice? We do not find answer these questions. Chapter simply gives us the necessary information and some tools. We cannot avoid asking these questions just because they are politically sensitive. For the whole point of studying the history of politics in India since independence is to make sense of our present. We start uh, our topic with the context of 1990s. Rajiv Gandhi became the Prime Minister after the assassination of Indira Gandhi. He led the Congress to a massive victory in the Lok Sabha elections held immediately thereafter in 1984. As the decade of 80s came to a, a close, the country witnessed five developments that were to take a long-lasting impact on our politics. First, the most crucial development of this period was the defeat of the Congress party in the election held in 1989. The party that had won as many as 415 seats in the Lok Sabha in 1984 was reduced to only 197 in this election. The Congress improved its per- performance and came back to power soon after the midterm elections held in 1991. But the elections of 1989 marked the end of what political scientists have called the Congress system. To be sure, the Congress remained as important party and ruled the country more than any other party even in this period since 1989. But it lost the kind of centrality it earlier enjoyed in the party system. Second development was the rise of the Mandal issue in national politics. This followed the decision by the new National Front government in 1990 to implement the recommendation of the Mandal Commission that jobs in the central government should be reserved for the other backward classes. This led to violent anti-mandal protests in different parts of the country. This dispute between the 
supporters and opponents of OBC reservations was known as the Mandal issue and was to play an important role in shaping the politics since 1989. Third, the economic policy followed by the various governments took a radically different turn. This is known as the initiation of the structural adjustment program or the new economic reforms. Started by Rajiv Gandhi, these changes first became very visible in 1991 and radically changed the direction that the Indian economy had pursued since independence. These policies have been widely criticized by various movements and organizations. But the various governments that came to power in this period have continued to follow these. Fourth, a number of events culminated in the demolition of the disputed structure at Ayodhya, known as Babri Masjid in December 1992. This event symbolized the triggered various changes in the politics of the country and intensified its debate about the nature of Indian nationalism and secularism. These developments are associated with the rise of the BJP and the politics of Hindu Tava. Finally, the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi in May 1991 led to a change in leadership of the Congress party. He was assassinated by a Sri Lankan Tamil linked to a LTTE when he was on an election campaign tour in Tamil Nadu. In the elections of 1991, Congress emerged as the single largest party. Following Rajiv Gandhi's death, the party chose Nar Narasimha Rao as the Prime Minister. Now the era of coalition. Election in 1989 led to the defeat of the Congress party but did not result in a majority of any other party. Though the Congress was the largest party in the Lok Sabha, it did not have a clear majority and therefore it decided to sit in the opposition. The National Front was an allies of Janata Dal and some other regional parties received support from two dramatically oppos opposite political groups, the BJP and the Left Front. On the basis, the National Front formed a coalition government, but BJP and the Left Front did not join in this government. Let us now know about decline of Congress. The defeat of the Congress party marked the end of the Congress dominance over the Indian party system. The restoration of the Congress system way back in the late 60s. The dominance of Congress party was challenged. But the Congress under the leadership of Indira Gandhi managed to re-establish its predominant position in the politics. The 90s saw yet another challenge to the predominant position of the Congress. It did not, however, mean the emerge of any other single party to fill in its place. Thus began an era, era of multi-party system. To be sure, a large number of political parties always contested elections in our country. Our parliamentary always had representatives from the several political parties. What happened after 1989 
was the emergence of several parties in such a way that one or two parties did not get most of the votes or seats this also meant that no single party secured a clear majority of seats in any lok sabha election held since 1989 this development initiated an era of coalition governments at the center in which regional parties played a crucial role in forming ruling alliances let us now know what was alliance politics the 90s also saw the emergence of powerful parties and movements that represented the dalit and backward castes other than other backward class or obc many of these parties represented powerful regional assertion as well these parties played an important role in the united front government that came to power in 1996 the united front was similar to the national front of 1989 for it included janta dal and several regional parties this time the bjp did not support the government the united front government was supported by the congress this shows how unstable the political equations were in 1989 both left and bjp supported the national front government because they wanted to keep the congress out of power in 1996 the left continued to support the non congress government but this time the congress supported it as both the congress and the left wanted to keep the bjp out of power they did not succeed for long as the bjp continued to consolidate its position in the elections of 1991 and 1996 it emerged as the largest party in the 1996 election and was invited to form the government but most other parties were opposed to its policies and therefore the bjp government could not secure a majority in the lok sabha it finally came to the power by leading a coalition government from may 1998 to june 1999 and was reelected in october 1999 atal bihari vajpayee was the prime minister during both these nda governments and his government formed in 1999 completed its full term thus with the elections of 1989 a long phase of coalition government politics became in india since then there have been nine governments at the center all of which have either been coalition government or minority governments supported by other parties which did not join the government in this new phase any government could be formed only with the participation or support of many regional parties this applied to the national front in 1989 the united front in 1996 and in 1997 the nda in 1997 bjp led coalition in 1998 nda in 1999 and the upa in 2004 the era of coalition government may be seen as a long term trend resulting from relatively silent changes that were taking place over the last few decades 
in earlier times it was congress party itself that was a coalition of different interests and different social strata and groups this gave rise to the term congress system especially since the late 1960s various sections had been leaving the congress fold and forming the separate political parties of their own the rise of many regional parties in the period after 1977 while these development weakened the congress party they did not enable any single party to replace the congress here we close our today's lecture thanks for great listening